Well, hello everybody. Here we are at the final session of our NADP 2020 virtual conference series. I hope you've enjoyed the webinars as much as I have over the last weeks. My name is Martin Smith and I've been on the NADP board for several years and involved with the organisation since our beginning back in 1999. That was also the year that I started the Disability and Dyslexia Service at Brunel University in London. And prior to that, I'd worked for 25 years in mental health and social services, starting as an occupational therapist back in 1975. So I've been around quite a long time. And over those years, I've been delighted to work with a whole number of disabled people and with some excellent colleagues on things like the NADP board. One of the benefits of this longevity is that I get asked to do some really nice jobs. For example, chairing the NADP board panel for the awards. So, welcome to our 2020 NADP awards session. I would like to start firstly by thanking Lynn Wilson the superb operations manager with NADP and my colleagues on the board who have assisted me on the awards panel. Helen Young, Caroline Huntley, Joanna Hastwell and Jennifer Harley. Thank you very much for your help and support. I will shortly ask Caroline to present the winner of the Deb Viney Award or the Outstanding Practitioner, and then Helen to announce who has won our Lifetime Achievement Award. These winners will join a very impressive band of winners of, the, of our awards over the years. Dawn Luzu, Tina Sharp, Abby James and Caroline Huntley, winners of the Deb Viney Award, and Dave Laycock, Alan Hurst, Nasa Siabi, Barbara Waters, Deb Viney herself, Judith Waterfield, E.A. Draffen, Marie Norris and Elaine Shilcock for the Lifetime Achievement Award. A hugely impressive list of people. So without further ado, I will pass over to Caroline and Helen to let you know who have won our awards this year and who will be joining that immensely impressive list of winners of our prestigious awards. Thank you and over to Helen and Caroline. Okay, my name is Caroline Huntley. I'm one of the directors on board of NADP and one of the panel for the awards group. And I'm here to introduce the Deb Viney Award. So this award is given in Deb's honour every year annually and uh, it recognises Deb's amazing contribution to the sector. Deb was one of the founding members of NADP, then known as National Association of Disability Officers and uh, has had provided um, until she died in 2014. She worked tirelessly, tirelessly to promote good practice in the sector and gave invaluable support to many colleagues all over the place, nationally and internationally. So NADP um, award, it's given annually to recognise one member of the association for their contribution to making positive differences to the uh, experiences of disabled students and or disabled staff in the post compulsory education sector, of course. So this year's recipient is Christine Breakey from Spectrum First Education. Christine founded Spectrum First herself in 2003 in order to provide autism specific non-medical help. And Christine has, uh, con has, has herself worked tirelessly 
uh, to promote the social model of disability and has published books uh, to highlight the pitfalls for the curriculum for autistic students, uh, which are aimed at higher education professionals. Christine's also provided excellent CPD opportunities to specialists in the disability field. Kate Kenworthy, who nominated Christine, will say more about Christine's achievements. My colleagues and I are very pleased that Christine has received this award. It is so well deserved. Christine is an unfailingly kind person who will always put others first, especially our autistic students, and she's worked tirelessly to promote the social model of disability. Whether this be through the book she's written or the training she's delivered, Christine has always advocated for the best possible support for autistic people. Anyone who's met her will know she's an excellent person to have on your side in any argument, because as well as being very knowledgeable, she is not afraid to speak her mind and will advocate fiercely where she sees injustice. One of Christine's huge ongoing achievements is the social group for autistic students at Sheffield University, which unlike many others, not only survived but flourished over many years. Its success is due to Christine's perseverance and personal commitment to the importance of offering space for autistic people to be themselves and for their voices to be heard. One of Christine's mantras is that autistic people are the experts in autism and she recruited autistic staff knowing what an asset they would be to our students and the team as a whole. She's also paid for many of her employees to complete postgraduate certificates and master's degrees in autism. As for Christine, investment in her staff and the benefit this brings to our students was more valuable than profit. Christine has also completed countless hours of unfunded work. Even recently, with no thought of her own health or comfort, she has given her time to an autistic person who was in desperate need of support as they were being discriminated against. Her genuine selflessness has been a huge inspiration to many of us who know her. This award is a fitting tribute to an outstanding career and somebody who's devoted not only many years, but also tremendous passion and compassion to the sector. I'd like to say thank you to the organisers of this award for giving us this opportunity to thank Christine publicly for all of her work over the years. Thank you, Christine, on behalf of all of the staff and students from Spectrum First and those in the sector generally whose lives you've touched. I didn't know that I'd been nominated for any award, so it was uh, quite a shock when I found out that I'd um, been selected for the Dad Vine Award. Um, this award is very special. Uh, it comes from within the sector, uh, and most especially it's very special because it honours Dad Viney's passion and commitment to equality, inclusion and good practice, all of which the association aspires to. So I'm very humbled to be given it and absolutely delighted to accept it. Uh, there are, of course, some people I'd like to thank. Uh, first of all, my colleagues for nominating me. It was a very unexpected nomination and quite emotional for me because it comes at a time in my career when I'm winding down and just thinking about retiring. Um, I'd also like to thank the NADP committee for selecting me. I've never imagined having any award, let alone this one. So, and it's a great honour to be given it. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and most importantly for me, I'd like to give credit to the real experts. Uh, in other words, those autistic students and staff who have challenged me and have taught me everything I know uh, about autism over the years, um, equality and good practice. I wouldn't be in a position to accept this without them, so my thanks to, to all of them. I'd be retiring on a high because of this, but I intend to do my utmost to live up to Deb Viney's legacy in whatever I do in the future. Uh, and I just want to thank you once again, NADP, for entrusting me with this. Thank you very much. Hello. I'm Helen Young and I am one of the NADP Board of Directors and I also sit on the awards panel. It is my great privilege to introduce the next award, which is the NADP Lifetime Achievement Award. 
Each year, the National Association of Disability Practitioners, NADP, recognise one individual in the disability and inclusivity field for their sustained contribution to making a really positive difference to the experiences of disabled students and or disabled staff in higher or further education. Processes that the awards panel will discuss and consider examples of sustained excellent practice and work that we are aware of throughout the sector and will compile an initial list of nominees which then gets passed to the wider NADP board to vote on. When we're considering who to recognise with the Lifetime Achievement Award we're mainly looking at three areas. So we're looking for a member who has made a major and sustained contribution to the advancement of professionalism in higher or further education services for disabled students or staff in their institution but also beyond and that's throughout their career. We're looking for a member who has contributed to the disability sector in ways that may well extend above and beyond their duties and responsibilities in their day-to-day -day role. We're also looking for a member who's made an outstanding contribution to raising the profile of the National Association of Disability Practitioners. I am delighted to say that we have a confirmed recipient of the award this year. And in a moment, I'm going to go on to talk through the reasons for this person's nomination and why it was felt that they were a worthy recipient of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award. So you've had some information about the Lifetime Achievement Award. I'm now going to read some of the content of the nomination that was submitted for the person who will be the recipient of this award this year. This person has been working in the sector for over 25 years and has a wealth of experience and knowledge, particularly within the fields of deaf student support and research. She is the academic lead for the BSL and Deaf Studies undergraduate programme at the University of Central Lancashire and was instrumental in developing that course. She also acts as an advisor to deaf and hard of hearing students at the university. This person has published many research papers. Her interests lie in access for deaf students within higher education, the pedagogy of deaf learners, and more recently, as a result of completing a professional doctorate, deaf graduates and employability. She has published widely in the field of deaf student education and has presented at numerous conferences, both nationally and internationally. Additionally, this individual is a national teaching fellow and trains both specialist note takers for deaf students and also specialist support professionals for deaf students. She sits on the trustee board of Signature, which is the largest national awarding body for British Sign Language qualifications. And she's also on the editorial board for the Journal of Deafness and Education International. I have to say personally, I've known this person for the past 10 years, maybe slightly longer, in her role as convener of the planning group for the Consortium of Higher Education Support Services with Deaf Students, or as we more easily refer to it, CHESS. Um, and I know that she dedicates huge time and energy to that role. Over the past two years, this person has led discussions with the Department for Education um, around the review and amendment of non-medical helper qualification criteria and role descriptors to ensure that staff delivering DSA funded specialist support for sensory impaired students are appropriately qualified and that those roles are sensibly and suitably defined to reflect student requirements. This person's substantial experience and long-standing commitment to work and research within the sector, as well as her commitment to safeguarding against compromised standards of deaf student support in higher education in the future, make her, I certainly believe, wholly deserving of this Lifetime Achievement Award. As such, without further ado, I am so delighted to confirm that the recipient of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award is Lynn Barnes. Oh. So Lynn, I'm really sorry that I can't be presenting this to you in person on behalf of the board of NADP, but I just want to reiterate the words that have been said already. Well done and congratulations on this recognition, which is hugely well deserved. And um, thank you for your contributions over the years to the sector and very well done. Hi. 
I'd just like to say how thrilled I am to receive the NADP Lifetime Achievement Award for 2020. I'm not quite sure what I've done to, to deserve this, but I am deeply, deeply humbled. Thank you. When I first heard the words Lifetime Achievement, I thought, my God, how old, how old are you, Lynn? Um, but then I look back and realise that I've been teaching and supporting deaf young people for 31 years. Chess, chess itself was formed over 25 years ago. And since that time, there's been huge, huge numbers of people who've worked incredibly hard to make a difference to the lives of young deaf people. And so it's on their behalf that I accept this award and say thank you very, very much. Well, I thought that was great. Thank you to both Helen and Caroline for presenting those two awards to our very worthy winners. And obviously, congratulations to Lynn and to Christine for winning those two awards. It just remains for me to thank you very much for joining us today and to think about who you might like to nominate for the Deb Viney Award next year when requests for nominations come out from the office early in 2021. And I hope that perhaps next summer we can all meet in person to celebrate the winners of our awards and to come together to enjoy our conference 2021. So thank you from me, well done to our winners and onwards and upwards. Thank you very much.